Today we are going to talk about computer network. So I will be introducing you various terminology related to computer network. What is a protocol? What is the media? What are the basic components used in the computer networks? Why we use computer network? What are the uh, advantages and disadvantages of computer networks? Then we talk about different types of re the requirement for the network, hardware requirement for the network. And finally, we are talking about some, some informations related to how to find out, how to collect the informations about the network. So basically, what is happening today is that everything is designed around the computer network today. The whole paradigm has changed. Earlier, we used to work around a single computer system. All the software, hardware used to be designed around a single computer system. But now everything has changed. We have, we are uh, observing a new computing paradigm and this computing paradigm is centered around the computer network or what we call them in the internet. You see, we take example of a computer hardware design, how the computer system is being designed today. The modem has become the essential component of the computer system as keyboard or the floppy drive or the hard disk drive. So everything is around, again from the hardware point of view also we see that most of the computer today is having the internet connections. Take it, now go to take another example of the software side. We have operating system like Windows 98. Windows 98 has got again designed around the uh, network, designed around the computer network, designed around the, uh, the internet. Now you have seen if you have worked with the Windows 98 and you must have worked in the previous trimester that the Windows 98 contains the browser which is built in part of the system. You don't need to, if you want to surf the net, you don't have to come out of it and simply within sitting within the operating system environment, you can work with the uh, system. Take example of Oracle ATI, the RDBMS environment, again it supports the uh, internet feature. So internet has become the essential part of not only the hardware, but all the application software as well as system software. So today, we will talk about the basic fundamentals of the computer network which will help you to understand the advanced issues related to computer network. Now, so we will talk about uh, something like uh, what are the topology we use them, what are the protocols we use them, what is the standard currently being used. You must have, most of you must have searched the internet, but the same thing you must have noticed that whenever you search the internet, whenever you send the email, whenever you do the FTP, you are using certain protocol for uh, for using all these uh, um, activities now. So we'll talk about all these things in little bit later on. First, let me switch over to what is the basic definition of a computer network. How is it different from any single uh, standalone based machine now? So this is one definition which we have given you. But you try to understand the computer network is a group of two or more independent computers connected in an organized manner such that they can communicate with each other. So basically one the important component in this definition which you can see that when we say computer network we are always talking about the more than one machine. But not necessarily that we have a in computer network only we can have a number of computing machine anything for example printers or other resources also could be a part of the computer network. So the basic thing in computer network which is different from the single standalone machine is that we have more than one computer which is connected to certain roles and what we call them certain protocols or using certain topology. Now, so basically the reasons for the basic reason why we use a computer network that you must have used, must have seen. I can give you various examples. For example, you must have gone to railway resolution system, you must have gone to the airlines resolution system. They all work, they are very real life examples of the computer network where the people can, the, the actual resources is being shared by the number of terminals located at different part of the country now. So what we are talking about is that basic purpose of the computer network is to share the resources. Now it means, what it actually means is that if you are working in a computer network environment, it's not necessary, not required at all that you install the piece of software on each machine. For example, if you are a part of the computer network, and if you are working with C programming or working with any other programming language, the basic requirement for running any program, you must have a compiler or must have interpreted according to the language requirement. Now, that not require, you don't need to install each piece of software on each machine. So the cost-wise is very much effective. Again, so 
install it on a single machine and anybody can use the uh, resources if it is part of the computer network. So, this is one example we have given you to, uh, of the how the resources are being shared. Not only resources, by resources we do not mean only the uh, software, but also the hardware resources can be used. If you have a 20 system as a part of the computer network, you do not need to have a printer installed with each machine. There could be a single one or two computer uh, the printers and all the 20 machines can share with these uh, printers resources. So, by sharing the resources means program, software, uh, system software, application software, somebody has written applications program and you want to use them or going to install them on the main pro main uh, system what we call them server which I will try to define little bit at later stage and anybody uh, who can wants to use them can use them, they, know, they do not need to install on their own machine. And the second thing basically I can use the remote I O devices, again not necessary that all the machines are connected in the same system, they must be for example you can think of any organization for example you take example of take example of big corporate organizations, there are various departments are there, the personal departments, the finance department, the other administrative department, the other R and D department and they all have a, they all have a similar or they all have own network, they all can be connected into a single network and anybody from any department can access certain resources lying on some other department. Uh, so, if this way we can utilize our resources in much more optimal manner and this is the real advantage of the computer network. And we will talk about remote I O devices, we will talk about remote resources also. For example, some of you might have worked with FTP or what we call them file transfer protocol that you, you are located in India, but your machine might be located in USA and you, are, you can log in directly on that machine and you can work on that machine get the result on your machine. And most of the people who are handling with export projects which have got a, which, uh, for which they have to talk to their clients quite often and the machines are lying on the client side and, and the people who are working on another side they can talk to the client or they can run certain programs on the client machine although the distance between the client and the other machines or server machines are far away. So, that is the what we are talking about that you can share the resources not necessary on this machine which is part of the computer network in the same building uh, or in the same room, but also um, the resources which is located very, very far away and we will talk about all these issues as we introduce some basic concepts so we will try to understand. Now, so these are the various examples already we have given you, like for example that uh, the another example of computer network and you all have worked with the computer network or with the internet. The one I already listed that sharing of the resources, local resources, remote resources. The second one is that you, you can use the net or you can use the internet for sending the email, you can do the chatting and most of the BIT students must be aware, aware of it that we do the chatting. Every day we do, every Thursday we do the chatting and discuss all the problems related to uh, um, whatever they come across. So, the chatting is another example of uh, sharing the resources and talking to somebody through the computer network sitting far away. Uh, we can do the video conferencing today the, because of the computer network has the distance between the um, places has become very smaller and you can do the video conferencing sitting at one place and talking to the people located at very far away and discuss all their problems. So, this is again the part of the network. Now, in computer, in computer science no other discipline has advanced so far as the computer network. What we call them in computer science every 18 months we have a new generations, something what we call them 386, 486, Pentium and all other devices. Every 18 months the, all the devices are changing. But the computer network again has changed that rule, again the change is much more faster um, in computer network than the 18 months boundary what is being uh, measured in other discipline. So, now, so some of the advantage already discussed with various examples, but again once I again I will list them and talk, talk to you in much more detail what the major advantage of this one price performance ratio. What we are talking about is that you must have visualize that instead of installing the system on each machine separately is much more costlier than installing the only one piece of software which can be shared by in, in number of users. So, the price and performance is little bit. So, the price is you are saving it, the, the saving is much more optimal and so on. The performance quality something sometimes what happens is that if your machine is not very fast enough 
and then you can transfer your program into other machine. You can run this program on another machine and get your result there. This is something we, what we do with the uh, what we call do with the telnet type of application. That if you don't have a access to very uh, fast computing machine at your site, then you can log into some other machine, do your computations there, and then you get. We have a similar concept in computer network. Sometimes we what we call them distributed system. Distributed system. Sometimes the students get confused between these two terminology. They, th they think that the computer network is same as a distributed system, which is not so. Of course, for the system to be distributed, it they must have to be in the network. But distributed system is a much more higher layer concept than the computer network. In distributed network, system takes care of many things. For example, in computer network, if I want to send email, if I, if I have to do some file transfer, if I have to do the remote logging, you have to know the addresses of the client machine and do little bit of the uh, low level job. But when I am talking to the distributed system, it basically it means that if I am running my program and my system is not sufficient enough to handle the uh, um, requirements in terms of the memory or in terms of the other requirement, then system will automatically transfer this uh, um, the control to another machine when the system where the uh, system can handle it and get the result uh, on your system. You are not aware of it. But again, on all the system on which the control has to be transferred, they have to be part of the computer network. So, the point which I am trying to explain to you, the distributed system is another concept, but little bit higher layer concept, but the similarity between the two is both have to be network. So, this is what I was talking about, the performance quality. Again, that if you, something is not at your disposal, some, it can be transferred to another machine and it can be done. It can be done. The third one is again what we are talking about, reliability. Reliability is a very important concept in the computer network. If one system is down, if your printer is down, then you have another printer into your network, into the network, you can access uh, to that printer also. So, the, but if you are working in one machine, a standalone machine, if that system is down, then it means that you can't do anything. But here you have advantage that you can access to the um, another resources. Now the important thing is la the last one, the, uh, the uh, incremental growth of computing power. Now what you have is like this. This is what we did earlier when the, um, uh, the uh, some other country has refused to send, uh, give us this computer, the supercomputer to India. What we did, what the computer science did in India is that they they combine they uh, they combine very uh, fast machine and put them as a computing uh, as a one computer network. So what I'm talking about is that if I want to increase the um, the um, the speed or the computing power of the uh, computer network, then I can add. Uh, I can simply add that type of system as a part of the computer network. It's not that you don't have you have to redesign the system. So I can within the computer network, I can increase the performance of the system, increase the computing power of the system by adding just new machines to it. But this is not possible in the single standalone system because if you want to have a high, um, the better CPU performance, you must have a uh, replacement of the new uh, um, CPU. But this is uh, which you can this type of situation can be easily handled in the computer network type of situation. Whatever you want to just add to it, uh, uh, that will be accessible to you as a, uh, in the computer network. So, but we have dis disadvantages. Disadvantage is that as you want to have more power at your disposal, the the memory requirements much more higher. The software becomes bit uh, complex. You know that one thing what is happening in the computer science is that the hardware development is very fast compared to the software development. And I told you that I was giving you one example of a uh, that every 18 months some the new hardware technology is coming, Pentiums and the and other type of things. But the but the way the software is moving a little bit far behind that. We are not able to explore the total capability or the capacity of the computing system because hard software development takes lots of time compared to the hardware. So now so this is again what we are talking about is that here you have the um, software and especially if you want to develop a software in the computer network environment, the it, mu it must take lots of time. So the software development, the resource management because there to handle a single resource is much more easier. But if you ask anybody who is working as system administrator, administrator uh, as a part of uh, 
computer science uh, the what we call the um, uh, computer center or any other establishment they know that how it is not so easy to handle the computer network system. So, to manage the network is much more easier than much more difficult job than uh, manage a single resource based system. So, as you add some as you add some system complexity gets increased in terms of the hardware and software. So, resource management becomes a big issue in computer network, but now with the new type of um, software coming in the network management might be much easier job. Uh, but of course, we right now still we do not have other type of resources available to us. Network architecture management again, so the uh, as you keep on increasing them, the complexity be becomes um, uh, it basically gets on increased uh, in terms of both hardware as well as the software. So, now we will talk about the uh, <coughs> networks, I can have a various way I can categorize and one way to categorize is basically the area of location and what we call them distance now. And there where you have a LAN, MAN, WAN and all sort of uh, computer, computer network uh, uh, configurations you have. You know that the LAN is something what we call them, so LAN will uh, talk about the smaller distance. If you go much more higher then we call them MAN, then we much more go higher we um, call them WAN and so on. So, one way to differentiate between different type of configuration which you come across in computer network is the distance factor. The second will be the topology, how you are trying to combine all these devices, in what topology, what architecture you have taken. So, the, this is the way, the another, another way to differentiate is the topology factor. The second will be the protocol and that is very much important and I will be talking with uh, after a few slides that one protocol which you have, uh, in fact I have one example I had taken a little bit earlier, but I will not able to relate, now, right now the time has come to relate to things. Whenever you surf the internet, you must, uh, you are using certain protocol. For example, you simply want to search some information, like if you want to make a uh, Yahoo, hit to a Yahoo engine to for searching certain information, then again you are using certain protocol and that protocol is what we call them HTTP. So, whenever you want to search any site, you always write some addresses like http colon slash then triple w dot uh, something dot something dot something like this. So, http which you write in the beginning is that is a protocol which helps you to retrieve the document from the uh, from um, from your server or from the program from the machine where your program is located now. Each time you send uh, the email which you all have been doing quite often, we use another protocol what we call them single mail uh, transfer protocol SMTP, again another protocol used. But as a user you are not aware of it, but inside the system for every active user there is a standard protocol and I listed two HTTP and uh, this one uh, SMTP, but if you want to do FTP, again if you want to transfer file from one, one remote machine to another machine, you do another protocol what we call the FTP. If you want to work on a remote system, we use another protocol what we call them telnet. So, depending upon what type of activities you are doing, again just set of protocol. Same set of protocol we use in fact, we, if you want to connect mouse with your computer, we use another type of system. If you connect the printer with the, this one, the another type of system we use, another type of protocol what we call them RS-232C for connecting my and the what we call them from the um, uh, sing, uh, single uh, what we call them serial port and something like this. So, for every activity there is certain protocol, but the most important thing which you want to learn as a part of the computer network is that you have to learn later on what we call them TCP IP. Whether you send email, whether you do FTP, whether you do the telnet, if for everything the TCP IP protocol has, t so when we say protocol is a basically set of rules for transferring of the data. So, if you do the email again the behind the scene or at the lower layer, we use a protocol called TCP IP. Now, the TCP IP has become a standard protocol for the internet. Whatever transaction is taking place, whatever activity you do with the internet, behind the scenes is a protocol what we call them TCP IP. TCP is one protocol, IP is another protocol. And we will talk about uh, little bit later on that the whole we have a, the way, if we all have worked with the um, operating system. Some of you must have worked with Unix operating system, some of you must have worked with the Windows 95. Operating system is designed, the computer network is designed with same way as the, um, as the, um, the uh, operating system. Now, when you design, operating system is designed in terms of layers now. And Unix operating systems, the lowest layer is the kernel. 
So, kernel always try to interact with the hardware, device, hardware devices. So, when you give any command for printing something, then again it is job of the how you are trying to access to the hardware that is not your job. As a programmer, as an applications programmer, you always think in terms of what is the problem and what is the logic uh, should be used to solve this problem. But at lower layer, there is a program which try to interact with the hardware parties. And Unix terminology we call them kernel. So, the lowest layer in operating system design is what we call them kernel or the software which directly interacts with the hardware. And at the higher layer, you keep on adding various tools and utilities depending upon your requirement. For example, in Unix operating system, you have a shell and other utilities what we call them AWK and so on. But the, so what we are talking about layers, if you have a system, if your system is very complex, it will not design into the monolithic fashion, they always design into terms of hierarchical fashion. Same way the network is designed, network is a very complex design process, they cannot be designed into the small, uh, in the one linear fashion, in one monolithic uh, design, they must have series of layers and the lowest layer is what we call the physical layer which directly con directly talks to with the hardware devices which the for, uh, for example it talks to the modem modem talks to the uh, physical wires and so on you as a user will be sitting only at the uh, at the top layer and you will be using certain protocol called http ftp but internally everything is being done by uh, the lower layer protocol so tcp ip is a standard for the internet protocol if you want to understand how does internet work you have to understand the TCP IP protocol, which we will be taking in the next session. It is not possible for you to, uh, for me to cover all these issues today. So, we have again the architecture is different. The do not get confused between the topology and the architecture. We are something that two different issues, um, but of course, there might be a little bit overlapping, but that two things are two are different things. So, we say the client server architecture or peer to peer architecture. When you surf the internet, you always work in the client server environment. The browser which is installed at your side is a basically works as a client software and the browser which is sitting on another side where from you surf your internet, your surf, where, where from you are fetching your data that is called the server software. And the client server design has become the standard way of designing the computer network software. So, the now let us beginning I told you that we have a different classifications depends upon the de areas which we cover and one and the one type of uh, la one type of computer network which covers the smaller area domain what we call them local area networks. So, here is if you want to understand any network we have to understand is what protocol they are using, what medium they are using, uh, what topology they are using. So, and the the most important thing in this one is the the LAN is basically covers the small geographical area, a single building, single room and something like this. And then the media which you can use them, the optical fibers, you can use the coaxial cable, we use the twisted pair. You must be aware of the twisted pair which is used for the, um, for the used in the te telephone line. Another important thing which you have to understand um, as a computer science uh, students that sometimes when you try to examine the characteristics of various physical media, the term which we come across what we call them bandwidth. Some students get confused that bandwidth is the same as the what we call them um, data rate. Data rate is entirely different from the bandwidth. Right? Bandwidth defines the range of frequency. Some medium has a higher uh, ba bandwidth, some medium has a lower bandwidth. But one thing is certain that if you have a higher bandwidth, then the data rate will be much more higher. So, it means the coaxial, for example, coaxial cable has got coaxial cable enough. If you have a cable at your home, then you basically coaxial cable. Sometimes we say that the bandwidth of the coaxial cable is much more higher than the twisted pair. And the unit for measuring the bandwidth that you call frequency range uh, is uh, of coaxial cable it comes into the 500 megahertz. The point which I am trying to explain to you is that if you have a higher bandwidth, then higher data rate can be achieved. But again, with the same bandwidth, also I can achieve the higher data rate uh, by doing some different type of uh, um, encoding techniques, but which will be not be at this stage will able to take um, take up. Now, the example which I was talking about is that you all have a coaxial cable if you have a cable TV now. Now, each color transmissions 
for example, if for example, so in same cable, same cable we have a various channels are there, the Star TV, G TV, Sony TV and all sort of things. And these all the things are basically what we call them sometimes the multiplexing techniques are there. For each, for each color transmission for example, let us say the Sony TV requires 6 megahertz, then another might be taking the again 6 megahertz and something. So, the technique is called multiplexing on same channel, on same cable we have multiple channels at the same time they must have a different frequency range and that is being done uh, through what we call the multiplexing technique so that same time you can have multiple channels but it will not be uh, overlapping type of things and so on. So, multiplexing is another technique which you have to understand if you want to understand the physical media. So, for example, so the whole 500 megahertz of that is the bandwidth of coaxial cable can be divided into number of channels uh, and but again there is a distance again they keep some distance between the two, fre uh, two uh, frequency range so that the signals should not be overlap. So, that is another important point you have to understand when you try to examine the physical uh, characteristic of physical media like optical fiber have you got mode bandwidth and something like this. So, so and then <coughs> So, basically the one important characteristics of the LAN which is different from another topal uh, system is the high speed. Uh, so, because distance is very less, so we are the, the speed of computing the data is a much more higher. So, that is an uh, important characteristics which you have to understand. Now, the another higher end what we call the metropolitan area network. So, the network which covers the entire area. Uh, entire one city for example and there is a standard for this one for a land there is a standard and we have a IEEE 802.6 that is the series for defining different type of local area network uh, and so as you go higher we have to learn. So, if you want to understand the land uh, you have to understand these protocols IEEE 802.3, 802.4, 802.5. So, these are the various protocols and then various vendors have implemented these protocols. So, when you are learning with LAN environment, you have to learn those protocols and then you also have to learn the characteristics of various channels. Then again, so we have MAN, again the same, uh, the media also can be used for this one, uh, the, uh, but data rate again little bit lower side compared to the what we call the local area network. So, we can use for distributed application, the term distributed application already I have told you that it is uh, when we say distributed applications development, this term and most of these you will be working on distributed application. When we say distributed application development, it means that you are working or you are writing a software in client server environment. There must be some server machine where the main program is located and there will be a client software which will able to access the resources or the program or data from the main. So, you will be writing a program where you will have many clients many server, one server will be talking to many clients, one client will be talking to many. For example, take example of internet scenario, take example of Yahoo. So, when we say write www.yahoo.com is basically the name of the machine or name of the server where the engine or the program is stored which will able to take your request, find out the uh, information and again that will give back to you. So, they, they are basically uh, are in client server type of environment, whole software is written into the client server environment or distributed applications environment. And then we have a wide area network, again we are talking about wide distance, so protocol will be again different, the communications media might be different, we can use not only, by communications media once I can tell you not only the physical wire through which you are able to communicate, but it could be wireless media and today we are talking about new type of computing paradigm again is related to computer network what we call the mobile computing. Today what is happening is the most of the time you are static, uh, you are confined to a stand uh, desktop applications now, but sooner or later because sooner or later the whole paradigm will again change that while moving you can send your email, while moving you can remote, do remote login from your laptop machines and do some computation on remote machine, get your result, send email, get the email and everything will be in mobile. 
So, when we say the physical media in the physical media in the computer network, not necessarily the wire we are talking about, we are talking about wireless media, we can consume the information from uh, wireless also. For example, if I have to transfer a file from my machine to another machine in Bombay, then again I can, I don't need to have a, I can send it through telephone lines, but I can, I cross, I can also send the information through satellite and some other media I can take. So, this is what the, what we say the mobile computing, while moving you are in touch with the system doing some operations, doing some uh, applications development, getting the result and so on. So, the, uh, but again you have a, uh, it must be slower and the, what we say that the, if you are sending the information through satellite again it will be a delay problem. The way, so as you go in higher side, the, the area where you are covering, area coverage is much more higher than the land. The, but the speed will be slower and you must have sensed if you have talked to somebody through satellite that if you are talking to somebody from so, uh, someone which is again located in other country, then it takes some time, you have to do some pause and so on. So, it basically what we call then the terminology is called propagation delay. So, we have to, it takes lots of time. So, the speed will be slower in the other uh, man and van, uh, but area coverage will be uh, much more higher and we have given you some speed. But again, it varies from I mean, the media to media, 20 to 2000 kilobits per second. But when you land in the we are talking about megabits per second, 10 Mbps. Basically, in the LAN uh, local area network, the, the, the minimum is what we call them 10 Mbps. 